Hi everyone, it's Tarnished Treasures and today I worked in the living room. I dusted and vacuumed and I wanted to get into some of the little spots where I store decor to see if there was anything I wanted to donate to our church sale because this is the last weekend that they are collecting. So I found this little pile of kind of seasonal stuff and some books that I was just using as decor to donate. And now I'm gonna head into the dining room. I've also um, moved some things that were on this table so it's a little bare, but sometimes that's nice knowing that we're coming into Halloween, fall, and Christmas that there'll be a lot of stuff to fill that space very shortly. I have switched out some of the art on the walls as well. Uh, the size and proportion does not work at all, but I'm taking some stuff to school. I took the mirror into the guest bedroom. So I didn't want to have a bare wall, so I hung some of my artwork, even though it's kind of dinky. But, you know, as things change, I'll just wait to find the right thing to go there. Maybe another painting or maybe another mirror, who knows. But I'm fine with it being a little on the sparse side right now, knowing that honestly in the next like three months, it's going to be probably decor overlo overload. And speaking of fall decor, you know, we've got zinnias in bloom. We're in the mists of summer. It's time for pumpkin watch. So first of all, we think this thing is a weed right here, but we're leaving it to just see what it is. But I looked out through the window and I saw that we had a third pumpkin. So I guess we officially have a pumpkin patch. Oh, maybe we, okay, so we've got this one here. That one's gotten a lot bigger. I think this was the one that had the little flower on it. So that's getting bigger. And I saw one from the window over here. So I think we have a few plants going on. I don't believe that this is all from the same plant. And who knows what else could be hiding under there. So if all goes well, we will have at least three of our own pumpkins for the porch or who knows, maybe even inside. These are the chicken breasts that I uh, cooked when I made the soup yesterday. So I've got some taco seasoning there, onions and green peppers all from the garden. Well, the peppers, some lettuce, tomato, have a little bit of cilantro left on our plant outside, red onion, avocado, cheese, and I've got taco sauce and sour cream in the fridge, which nobody ever seems to use, although I love sour cream. It's nine o'clock and it has cooled down significantly from today. It wasn't very humid, so that was nice. It's breezy and warm and it just feels wonderful. I would love to sleep outside in weather like this. The sun is going down, so it's not beating down on us, but it is still extremely hot. You know, that heat that's just like thick and all around you. So we've got some amazing marigolds and then one plant. It, it just pulled out really easy, so I think the roots, I don't know, just weren't deep enough. Yeah. So we are going to, oh, you want to show them the yeah, seeds? Yeah, we're collecting the seeds from them. Yep. I've been throwing them in the garden. So we're going to cut some zinnias for inside, and then we have a lot of cherry tomatoes that we can pick. And we've also had our first red tomato that I think we'll eat for dinner tonight. So they're not very red, but they'll split if you leave them. So that's the reddest one there. And then... All these little guys can be picked and I'll definitely be sharing them with neighbors. Ow, it's prickly. Let's give it a twist and a yank. Look at it. <laughs> All right. And they see that one down on there? Yeah. Can you reach it and get that? Oh. Or do you need help? I need help. Okay. Also, interesting outfit, Miss mm -hmm. Pajamas, but look. A similar color palette, red and purple. <laughs> that wasn't as many tomatoes as I was expecting. This is our first ripe brandy wine. It feels great, so I'm gonna slice it up and have it separate with dinner tonight. Um, and then I found these three cucumbers and those were literally just on the edge. And I just picked, I think a day or two ago, and I don't even think anything was there. So I gotta get into the middle and see what's hiding and another really good sized pepper. 
we walked around the yard together and the kids picked out each flower and the color they wanted and they put together this very beautiful bouquet. The purple is butterfly bush. I don't know what the taller pink one is. And then it's one dahlia and the rest are zinnias. We have hamburgers and hot dogs on the grill. And then I cooked our neighbor's zucchini with one of our squash. And then I made a salad and that's a cucumber and those are cherry tomatoes from our garden. I had shared some moss that I made last year and now I'm gonna make another one. I have pulled out some fabric that kind of looks like a spider web. I have some black and white paper, a pencil to trace or draw with, scissors. I have this, which is part of a button hook for the body. You could use a piece of silverware. And then I have little embellishments to add for antenna or eyes. And I also have um, a piece of the cardstock, thin cardboard, just something for a little stiffness. This is part of a Kleenex box. And I will also need some glue. So the first thing that I did was I drew out the shape of some butterfly wings. Now you could do this on just a little piece of scrap paper first to test it out. Look online at a picture or maybe you have a field guide. So I've got the wings and I don't need the body uh, on this piece of paper because that's going to be that silver piece. But I do want to give just a little bit of space in the center so it can be glued onto the body there and that's where you'll hide the uh, legs as well. This paper that I have is extremely thin and obviously my lace is as well. So I need something to add some stiffness. I'm going to trace and cut uh, a butterfly shape out of the tissue box now. So I'm just tracing the uh, black piece of paper. So these are the same size and then you can trim it again later if you need to. I want to have this pattern on the underside of the wings. So first I'm gonna use just a little bit of Elmer's to glue this here. And then I'm gonna flip it over and I'm gonna paint this black. And then I plan on gluing, when that's dry, this white lace that has a spiderweb inspired pattern on top. And then you'll see the black peeking through and then this unexpected surprise of the uh, white pattern on the bottom. Just gonna use some regular old Elmer's and my fingers. I just use my fingers to brush it towards the edge because there's plenty of glue in the center, but I wanna make sure that all the edges of the paper are adhered. Then wipe the um, finger with glue on my leg. <laughs> And then once that is dry and they're all attached, any little spots there in the edge where they didn't line up, I'll just trim that away. That shouldn't take too long at all. So I think I'll just paint this black while I'm waiting. And if you don't wanna paint, use a Sharpie. I think I'm gonna use a Sharpie as well. Uh, I, might, I could paint it, but I'm thinking that that might add a lot of moisture to this and then make this take longer. So since the ink from the Sharpie is permanent and I don't have a ton of space to cover, I'll be able to glue that lace on real fast. I think Sharpie was the right choice because you can see that a lot of it doesn't even show through. So that just took me a minute or two. And I don't think I actually want to trim any extra off. I don't want these getting any smaller. So I'm going to use the Sharpie as well just to hit the edges because it's just a millimeter overhang. You could use a little colored pencil as well. I'm just going to hit the edges as well. Just a little touch. But I'm just making this up as I go, just listening to the materials, looking at it, seeing what it might need. I think the idea is to make these look handmade. I'm not trying to fool anyone to make them think it's a real butterfly or a moth. I want it to look like an artist did it. 
I can glue and cover the entire butterfly, wait till it's done, and then with little manicure scissors, trim the edge. And it lets a little bit more of the black show through. And you can see this is what the white looks like. And I would have to flip it and do one piece this way, one the other. And then I'd probably do something creative in the center with another little piece of trim. But I think I'm gonna use the big one. I'm gonna cover this entire side with glue. It'll dry clear and it might be shiny, but there isn't gonna to be too much black that shows through. And in the end, I might even put varnish on the whole thing to give it a little bit more stiffness. So instead of trying to put the glue on the lace and have it get all over the place, I'm gonna do it this way. And uh, we'll see if it works out. I don't really think it's gonna be any type of problem. Again, take your glue finger, wipe it on your thigh, because that's what they're for. I'm gonna put my lace on. Once that's on, give it a little press. And then I am going to trim the excess. And the air conditioner is on, so I'm gonna pop this in front of the air conditioner to help it dry quicker. So time to trim. Earlier, I said to listen to your materials. And when I put this together, I realized that that is not a good proportion. So I looked up at the blue Morpho that I have in this room and I realized that it has a very small body. So I got into my crystal prisms, trying to figure out what would work. And I have one that's even smaller than this, but I just have to kind of find a compromise because I do want some of that crystal to be coming out on both ends. This has a little wire there, so I'm gonna stick these two little pearls on wires through there to create the antennas and then work on wire for the legs. The antennas are twisted on, no glue or anything. I've got some nice sturdy wire and I have trimmed it and formed it around the crystal. So now I'm just going to use some little pliers to give it little feet and some Aileen's glue to glue. So this is gonna be the longest part is just gluing these on and then that will go on top and a little preview of what it will be. You could loop these, I'm just going to push them to the side a little. The legs have finished drying and that's the, the basics of making one of these. I think I wanna add some embellishments to the top of this one. So I gotta look at my stash and see what I have. And the legs aren't that even. It takes a little while to dry, but you can be as creative as you want, do all different types of things. I'll probably bend the antennas, maybe find some rhinestones or might be interesting to add a little spider on the back if I have a pin. So I hope you guys enjoyed seeing just a quick little tutorial and it'll be interesting to see what you come up with. And I think that's it for this video. So thanks for watching and I'll see all of you in another one. Bye.